and we got some player stories for you. Uh, one thing I will say is that one of the player stories builds off of the player story that you heard yesterday, if you're one of the members, 45-minute player story uh, talking about uh, two females that me and one of the saints in uh, Greece encountered. You dig? It's a beautiful thing. The topic today is female dishonesty. It occurs in very particular situations. Killer situations. Killer situations. Killer situations. Killer situations. Having some technical difficulties. Let me know if we're straight. But anyways, let me point out something to you guys first and foremost. You got a lot of females who want to go to places like Tulum, Mykonos, Greece, Ibiza, all of these hedonistic destinations, Las Vegas, Miami, they got all these girls trips popping off. And what you have to understand is that there's only one type of female who wants to do that. It's a low-life, dishonest, ratchet female who enjoys drinking and partying. There's nothing good that she's going there for. And what's more, she's going there to get slayed. Now, for the guys who can afford to be there, those are the guys who have the opportunity to slay them. But let me let you know, you don't need to romance these chicks because they know that they're only going to see you on that island of Mykonos or on that location of Tulum in the club scene, but you're both going to go back to your lives. And because of that, they're really leaving it all on the field, so to speak, which is to say they're not keeping it real. They're not being honest with anybody. They're not using real names sometimes. They're even misbehaving in ways that would be shameful if they were to see you in regular life. So let me give you guys a player story. And by the way, I appreciate the prosperous saints. I just want to quickly acknowledge TJ, who became a member at Patreon.com. I want to acknowledge Marcin, who became a member at Patreon.com. Acknowledge all of the saints who are uh, currently members and show love. I really appreciate that. And shout out to um, you know uh, Sean Asento, who's been a, a member for a long time and just uh, renewed memberships. I just want to acknowledge all of you guys. I really appreciate those who are prosperous and show love to those who show love to them. Now, let me uh, continue on with this work. You dig? And shout out to the uh, super chat that just came through. That was Sorrow. And I had the good pleasure of meeting Sorrow. He writes, can I use prepaid cards on your site? How are you? I don't know. You'll have to try it out. We have the same payment processor that all major businesses use. So you should be good to go, but I think Patreon will be more likely to uh, work out for you. Now, as you guys know, me and one of the saints were in Mykonos. One thing to know about Mykonos, Greece, is that it's very expensive. And right now, um, pretty much most of the hotels are sold out. So if you're able to stay in a hotel, you have to pay like $700 a night or better. Uh, which is fine for some folks, but most of these females who are here, they're either here because they have a sponsor, i.e. a trick who's spending money on them, or they're a prostitute of some sort, OnlyFans, what have you. There are very few women who earn their money the normal nine to five way who can afford to be here in Mykonos, Greece. Now, that being said, the women who do come here come here strictly to party. Let me give you a player story about an experience today that really, I think, highlights well the kind of dishonesty you should expect to see from a female. Number one, the saint and I are walking through Mykonos, which if you've ever been here, all of the buildings are white. I think it might be a legal requirement that they maintain the white character of all the buildings. There's a lot of narrow alleyways, gorgeous uh, restaurants, beautiful views of the beach, nice sunsets you know the clubs go right up to the water and they have an outdoor outlet on the rear of the club so it's like an outdoor patio that's right on the water shout out to derek uh oh yeah and this game is going to help you slay and play these females i promise you derek appreciate the super chat so we're walking around doing a little bit of scouting now mind you it's 6 a.m right actually it's 6 30 a.m and we just retired you dig um so we started gaming tonight, I think at about 11 p.m. when we finished dinner. 
So we're on the scene like a sex machine. We're kind of walking through uh, the club area and we see two females taking photos in front of a church, a historical church. And just a side note, a lot of females come to gorgeous places like Mykonos or Tulum or Dubai, or in some cases, if you ain't got budget, you might go to Miami or Vegas. And they take these photos for the gram, right? And they do this so that they can get attention, even though they're not making a penny off of Instagram. It just shows how circular their thinking is and how meaningless their existence is. But anyways, they're taking these pictures. And then the saint I was with says, he said, hey, uh, are you guys Americans? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we are Americans. He's like, yeah, I could tell. So where are you guys from? They say, oh, we're from New York. And from there, the game starts popping off. Yiddig. And so he opened this up and he's taking lead on this game. You know, I, I slide in. I was a little bit surprised because this particular saint, actually, when he's engaging females, he usually actually picks, you know, top notch stuff, like even more top shelf than the stuff I'm inclined to pick. Yiddig. So he definitely usually goes after those model types. There's a blonde one and a brunette one. The blonde one, she was all right. Nice eyes. And the brunette one was, eh, I wasn't impressed. So anyways, we're gaming these chicks and eventually we walk away from the church area toward the club. So we don't quite make it to the club. We continue engaging in conversation. And I'm gonna pause it right there real quick. Um, I wanna shout out to Mitchell McCauley. He writes, peace to the saints. I've been working on the Sassin Planner. I truly believe that it'll be the best on the market. See, I like that. Number one, I love people who are prosperous, real businessmen, and I'm all about helping you be successful, right? Best thing you can do, if you don't crack you a female following Marquette Devon Burton, you can crack you a dollar, you dig. And that is much better because when you wake up in the morning, that woman might change the way she feels about you. But when you wake up in the morning, $100 is still worth $100. He further writes, if I may ask fellow saints, so he's asking the assassin right now, he writes, could you please give me your blessings for success on this project? That's a beautiful thing, saints. Wish that gentleman some blessing. Wish him ease in creating this planner because it'll be a good benefit to all of us. And I plan on buying one myself. He writes, nothing but peace and love to the assassin. And this is a beautiful thing because he's creating a tool for us to help organize our thoughts and help pursue our goals. And that's that's really a, a righteous thing. So absolutely wishing you blessings and much success. Shout out to Tommy. He comes through. He writes, peace to the saints. Women's first language is lie. Oh, you're going to be astounded at this player story I got for you. These are some big lies I'm about to share with you. And it's almost funny. And mind you, a super player doesn't get mad because you've seen the game so many times. And when you're in a place like Mykonos, Miami, Las Vegas, Tulum, you know what kind of women you're dealing with. They're there for a good time, not for a short time. But the problem is when people don't have integrity, it takes a lot of confidence and, and certainty of self, to be honest. Lying is the easy way out. It gives you a short-term solution, but not a long-term solution. And that's why they take the easy way out. I challenge you men, you saints and you lady saints, to be honest. And remember, there's a difference between being blunt or frank and being honest. Tommy writes, peace to the saints. Women's first language is lie, deceive, sweet talk. That's right, aka manipulation trickery and the importance of men getting good game especially from those who are wise is critical because women already have an advantage in their ability to manipulate it's like almost like natural to them they they don't have to struggle at it you know it's as easy as breathing and when i give you this example you're gonna say whoa marquette i can't believe they did that but hey please believe it this is how they get out shout out to napper he writes peace of the saints may everyone have success and stability throughout the future enjoy the content i appreciate that shout out to reckless he writes first super chat that's a beautiful thing he writes been a patron for a year now that's loyalty something very few people have he writes i discovered you on the critique of the four horsemen of game been under the tutelage the beijing pimping ever since. Oh, the big pimp. And I said Beijing. I saw those uh, dots. He writes, peace to you, saint. Thank you. Well, it's truly a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Tommy Bailey writes, this girl at my local store always acts happy to see me. Oh, they do that, don't they? But when I tried to set up a date with her, she ignored me. It's funny how two-faced women are. Goes to show she's an att attention-seeking liar. Oh, yes. Attention for women 
it, it it's their wiring. It's something that just lights up their brain. And the funny thing about it is men being more linear and rational, we want attention to convert it into something else that's more valuable to us. So if we might wear some jewelry like this to get attention, that's because we want to convert that into intercourse. If we wear this to attract a female, we might want to convert that into a relationship, things that are more tangible and more meaningful to us. Whereas women are fine not converting attention to anything because to them, attention itself Self is valuable, right? So we have to understand the difference in wiring between the male and the female. Shout out to Emmanuel. He writes, cracking a dollar is definitely the plan, right? <laughs> At the beginning and the ending of the day, that should be the plan. He writes, uh, Tommy, Tommy writes, goes to show she's an attention-seeking liar. Like what Snoop said, bitches ain't shit. You've never lied. You've never lied. Now, carrying on. So... We're talking to these girls that we met at the church that's in the neighborhood of where the nightclubs and bars are. We then progress on foot about 20 meters a little deeper into the area where the bars are. More foot traffic, a little bit louder, lots of people walking by, many languages. And the four of us are standing there having some meaningful conversation. These girls are from Brooklyn, New York, seem to be middle class girls. And we're having deep conversation. Now, mind you, let me warn you, the middle of the night is not a time for deep conversation. Mykonos is not a time for deep conversation. Talking to promiscuous women is not a time for deep conversation. But all the same, we're having deep conversation. It happens like that every now and then. Then we go from this deep conversation to like, okay, you know, let's sit down in one of the bars and you know have something to drink and continue chatting. We sit down in the bar and the saint and I, we order orange juice, which is the righteous thing to do. The females both order alcoholic beverages, which just confirm that these are indeed harlots. They're not taking lead and they're trying to get lit and sauced up, even though we're just having casual conversation, right? They, they don't know what time it is, so to speak. And they even went in for a second round of drinks, which just shows you they're getting sauced up for the night. We continue on in meaningful conversation. And let me point out one uh, curious thing that if you're a member at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, you may already know when you're spitting game as a team, that is you have a wingman and you guys are both going at some chicks, ultimately the female is going to choose and you have to afford them the opportunity to do so. And when they make that decision, don't fight it. Just let it be what it is. If you're not attracted to the girl you get matched up with, you might need to ride it out just so that your friend can go ahead and close a deal. Or you might see if he thinks he can close that deal independently and then go ahead about your way onto a new mission. You dig? But at the end of the day, the females are going to choose. A P will always let you know the female has to choose. So long story short, being that the, the other saint had opened up the situation, he gets first dibs. So I want you guys to know as gentlemen, if someone else pops it off, meaning they strike up the conversation with the females, they opened it. If they open it, they get to take lead and pick the female that they want until the females assert otherwise, and they kind of switch off to the guy that they want. You dig? Because what you need to know is that you don't want the girl you want. You want the girl who wants you because that girl is going to let you do what you want to do. She's going to give you favor and advantage. There will be no struggle in that situation. So at this point, he's matched up with the blonde one, who's the more attractive one. The brunette one, I kept looking her up and down, trying to find something I like. I couldn't find anything I liked. I was thinking, gee, if we come to the unfortunate situation where we have to split off and I end up with this one, I'm going to just have to do some tap dancing just to keep her busy because I surely wouldn't give her any of this candy muscle because she's unworthy. Shout out to Nate. He writes, giving game as usual. Peace of the saint. Peace of the saints. So we're having conversation. And then at one point, um, the saint is intelligent. And so he writes on his phone, which one do you want? And then he hands his phone to me under the table. And then I basically tell him back, like, hey, bro, it's your world. You opened it up. Go ahead and take the prettier one. No problem. Then eventually... He's sitting in front of the pretty one once we finally sit down in the restaurant. He's sitting in front of the pretty one. I'm sitting in front of the uh, the grenade, which is fine. We're having some good conversation. And then the pretty one who is sitting in front of him and he and I are sitting next to each other. The females are sitting next to each other. We're facing one another and we're sitting on a 
you know, basically that back patio of a bar right on the water. It's a gorgeous setting. I, I promise you, if you can afford to get out there and check it out, you should definitely do it at some point in life. And, you know, if you take your lady, go to Santorini, not Mykonos, because Mykonos is for the hoes. So anyways, um, the good looking blonde one eventually says, hey, I need to go to the restroom. So she has the brunette scoot out and then she goes to the restroom and then the brunette says, I'm just going to slide all the way down. So she slides all the way down, which then positioned her in front of the other saint, not me. What this was, saints, if you're seasoned in the game, you can understand this move. This was a strategic effort for them to reshuffle the deck so that they were matched up with the guy that they found more interesting. So now all of a sudden the brunette who's less attractive is paired up with the saint and then the blonde comes back and then she sits where the brunette used to be. So she's now paired up with me, which is to let you know, yes, it was theoretically more convenient for the brunette to just slide down, but socially speaking, it would be against social norms not to let her return to her seat if that seat was in front of the guy that she was interested in or supposed to be talking to. So clearly this was a strategic move and this was a subtle way for them to you know, reposition things. So now the attractive uh, blonde is in front of me. So I say, okay, it's go time. We know what it is. We know what this means. So then we go ahead and accelerate the game because they've made some decisions. And now that these decisions have been made, we can go ahead and accelerate. So next thing you know, um, I say something to the blonde chick to where she says, oh yeah, you know, I'll show you the video of it. And she's talking about a beach club that goes on in, in Mykonos. So I say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna come over on your side and check it out. So then I get out of my seat and I go sit next to her. So game is accelerating, physical proximity has been increased. Then the, the saint that's with me, is strong with his game. So then he splits the tables up and goes and sits next to the brunette on her side as well. So he's accelerating things in parallel, which is great. And this is ideal so that when they're ready to get smacked down, he and I have been running this relay or running this race rather at the same pace. So it's not a situation to where his is ready and mine is not ready or vice versa. So then I, I put my arm around her. She's showing me a bunch of things on her phone, shows me you know, the beach party that they have been at at the other beach at Mykonos and a couple other like gorgeous sites that they have taken photos of. Now, mind you, this is all very revelatory because it's letting me know the nature of this female. She's been updating her Instagram regularly since she got to Greece so that people can see where she is and they can give her some accolades and like her pictures and make her feel good and give her attention. And she gets paid zero dollars for this. She is not a public uh, figure. She has no reason to be so diligent in taking good photos and uploading it to Instagram. But it's letting me know that much of the reason she's there in Mykonos is solely to live on social media and get recognition. So this only confirms the horrific nature of her personality and that her philosophy involves pursuing attention indiscriminately. Conversely, I've also been in Mykonos and if you check my IG, you've not seen me upload one single story from Mykonos. Why? I don't care that much. I haven't had time. I'm behind. I got other things to do. So anyways, uh, we're accelerating the game and then eventually, and now mind you, it's like 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m. is getting late. Now, these clubs don't shut down till about 6 a.m. Anyway, so you can go late if you want to, and them, like us, had been out at till 6 a.m., 5 a.m. the day before and the day before that, because that's pretty much what you do on this hedonistic island. So then we go ahead and eventually close out the check, and then we head out. Um, we're going to walk them home because the brunette said she was drowsy which is possible because it's like 4.30 a.m. This is reasonable. We walked them back to their spot. Um, and ironically, when we got there and stopped, the brunette like stopped right next to the blonde. And I just turned and looked at her. I was like, you're just going to stop right here, right next to us? And she was like, what? I was like, step over five feet, which is to say, B -b bitch, slide your dumb ass over that way so we can have a little bit of privacy as we say this goodbye. Right. So anyways, I, I throw a little bit more game at the blonde, see if she's ready to, you know, separate. You know, it wasn't really there. She gives me a tight hug. 
And um, we basically go our separate ways. They go into their hotel and we walk back downhill to get something to eat. So we go into a restaurant. We're in, we're in Greek islands. So of course, we have some gyros. And as we're eating the food and having conversation, maybe about 20 minutes later, um, out of the, the my peripheral vision, I kind of see something familiar and I turn and who do I see walking down the hill? It was the blonde chick and she turns around and like kind of like, like darts back up past where I could see her. Um, and I, I asked the other saying, I was like, did you see who that was? And he was like, yeah, that was, that was the chicks, right? I was like, yeah, that was absolutely them. Now, why is this relevant? Well, because they lied. They said that they were going to bed, which is a reasonable thing to say because, again, it was like 5 a.m. by the time we finally parted ways. And I do believe them when they say they were up till 5, 6 a.m. the night before because that's pretty much what everybody does. So they had gone to the great length of, you know, telling us that they were going to sleep just because they wanted to separate and go um, hop on some new penis. And there's nothing wrong with that. They could have very easily been like, oh, hey, by the way, it was nice to meet you guys. We want to go hit a club by ourselves, right? They could have just said that straight up because we don't know them. We have no pre existing relationship. There's no need to have any loyalty or anything like that. But the brunette one had said that they were sleepy and they had went back to their hotel for that reason. Now, now mind you, Van Lee writes, should have been mold one. Please, please stop the nonsense. Stop the nonsense. We've already destroyed that ideology. And you you have to realize, Van, that you're talking about things in retrospect. And that's that's petty thinking. I mean, it's petty and immature because you can say should have been a lot of things after you hear the whole story, right? And that's the, the sign of an immature mind is that you listen to all the facts and then you say, oh, you should have done this when in actual fact, you probably don't have the necessary experience or success to be giving me advice right now, right? Let's be real. Anyways, so um, we saw the females and, and she at least had enough shame to dart out of the way. I think she probably thought that I didn't see her, that the saint didn't see her. But here's the thing. I'm a super player. It doesn't matter if I saw you because I don't care that I saw you. I don't care for... You could have just told me off the rip, like, hey, I don't, I don't want to mess with y'all. Like, we're going to carry on. Or it could have been a situation where the brunette didn't want to mess with, with the homie. Or it could have been a situation where they just didn't want to be impolite and neither of them wanted to mess with either of us. You don't know. But the point is, in a place like Mykonos, Las Vegas, Miami, Tulum, all of the chicks are there for a good time, not a long time. And you're basically trying to smash as quickly as possible. So when the gentleman says mode one, he's referring to some um, methodology described by a YouTuber. And at the end of the day, were we aggressive? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, but not everything. You're not going to win every fight you get into. But the key is the fight. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is because sometimes you guys are shocked when females are lying to you. And I'm not shocked at all. And I would never get mad. Like, for example, they had darted away and we went back down to the clubs because we we're trying to do the same thing. We we're doing the same thing that they were trying to do. They were probably trying to find their best move for the night. And we were trying to find our best move for the night. That's why there's no hard feelings. The difference between a man and in this case, a female, not a woman. Don't worry about mode one. And by the way, anybody bring up any other people or their methods, they'll be blocked because we not we not spreading corruption among the youth. We spreading good game. You dig? We spreading good game. Uh, so point is, we went back to the clubs after we ate, and then we end up seeing them when we were around. When I saw her, I like waved, like, hey, what's up? Because it doesn't matter. Like, he's like, I'm not your boyfriend, young lady. Like, there's no need for you to like try to hide or feel ashamed for what you're doing. And that's super player. That comes from being a P to where you're not looking down on her because you already knew what she was from the beginning. They're pretending as though we thought that they were good women from the start. No, there are no good women in Mykonos. There are no good women who fly to Miami for a girl's trip. There are no good women who fly to Tulum. There are no good women who, fly, you know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't exist. So anyways, 
uh, that was pretty dope. And I kind of enjoyed it because it was funny. And I was like, you know, I should share this because it's like the best example of the lengths women go to to try to preserve their appearance of being moral or of being decent people. And the irony is that, you know, the blonde chick, Shorty, follow me on IG, DM me and liking pictures and guarantee you if I wouldn't have saw her very next day, she'd have hit me up like, hey, what are you doing for lunch? Hey, meet us at the beach. And low key, she probably still will. She's going to share an excuse. She's going to share some more lies to cover over her errors because that's what people of low integrity do. But it's not like an insult. And that's why I want to share this with you because one, you have to understand why they lie, understand when they lie, and most importantly, understand how to react to it. And by the way, look at a P's fingernails. You dig? My nail, if my nails look better than your girl's nails, you need to go ahead and fire her right now. This is called leisure. When your nails can look like that, that's called leisure. You dig? Um, but the point is, I wasn't tripping on Shorty. Now, let me go to the second piece. Right. See, you see a female. She writes, I see, I've seen photos of Tulum. Why wouldn't I go? Well, let me help you out from the perspective of someone who's experienced and well-traveled, love. You see, certain places are promoted to you. Mykonos is promoted to you. Tulum is promoted to you. These are party destinations, so they're primarily there for the enjoyment of carnal pleasures. Tulum and Mykonos are not the only good-looking islands. They're just the only ones that are marketed, and they're marketed primarily because they're hedonistic, lawless destinations. Like, for example, no one's wearing a mask in Mykonos. Not one person is wearing a mask out here. But it's ironic because if you would have flown into the country of Athens, into the Athens, or the country of Greece in the Athens airport, they make you show a COVID-19 vaccine or a COVID-19 negative PCR test. But once you get to Mykonos, it's lawless and there are no masks. There are no mask requirements. Every hotel will have a sign that says you must wear your mask indoors, but we just laugh and then we sign the paper saying that we're wearing our mask. Because at the end of the day, people who are wealthy get to break the rules, right? And that's what's happening on this island because, you know, people are paying a, a bundle to be here and it's an expensive place. Most Greeks you talk to kind of like think of Mykonos as a legendary place and most of them have never been. They just have stories of it. But anyways, check this out. If you guys are members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, there's a video I posted um, earlier, like much earlier today, and it was a 45 minute long video and it was about the activities of last night. And there are two females that I talked about. And I am curious for those who watched it, you remember how that player story ended. Do you think that those chicks hit us up after that, after the way that that player story ended? I just want, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to tell me what you think. And by the way, shout out to the folks who support the work. I'm definitely gonna have to make this one private um, after we finish up. So I won't, like for those who saw the player story, let me know. Oh, yeah, guy says he might hop on Patreon. Bruh, if you think this is game, this is not game. I'm just, I'm just, it's 6 a.m. I'm just sharing with you like a just one of the things I did tonight. Now, mind you, we started going in with the game at 11 p.m. today. I'm just telling you one of the things we did today. The player story from yesterday or earlier today, 45 minutes, highly practical, specific steps. But let me know who saw that player's story and if they think that those chicks hit us up again after the way that night ended. <laughs> and for, for those who don't remember, that night ended with uh, the girls drove us back to our hotel. And then after that, I made one get out of the car and I had asked her a question. And then the homie was talking to the other girl. Okay, yeah. So folks say, yeah, they did hit you up. Yeah, you're right. So here's the funny thing. Uh, we're out, you know, doing our thing today. I get a DM from one of the chicks. And it was actually the taller girl who DM me, ironically. So she DM me and she says, hey, what are you guys doing tonight? And mind you, let me just share a little bit of playerism. You did, because I know it's some haters in, in, the, in the chat. I just want to share this for y'all. You hear me? Share a little bit of playerism for you. Uh, t let me just pull up my calendar real quick. You heard me let you know what's on my calendar for tomorrow. Because it's hard to remember these Greek girls' names. I got to write them down. 
Yes, indeed. But um, so yeah, she hit us up and she says, "Oh, um, what are you guys doing today?" And I, and in my head, I'm thinking like, "Yo, like you guys should have been getting smashed last night. So why are you hitting me up today? Like y'all should have already been smashed. We not trying to spend two days on anything. Not on this island." So I hit her back. I wrote, what do you girls want? Shout out to Neil for showing love. It's a beautiful thing to see prosperity. All of you guys should be prosperous. I love to see this. And I'm hoping that Neil has even more prosperity, you dig? And all the hustlers out there, keep hustling, keep winning. I love to see it. Um, so I, I text her back. I, what, do you go, what do you girls want? Which is to say rudely, like, why are you messaging me? And then she responds, oh, right now we're taking photos, um, but after we're finished taking photos, we'd love to hang out with you guys, but we can't stay out too late because we're changing hotels tomorrow. Now, in my head, I'm like, when you tell me that there's an end time to when you're going to hang out, that's like code language for you're not trying to get smashed. And when you're saying you're not trying to get smashed, then what do we have to talk about? It's not like you have morals and it's not like I plan to see you again because we're on an island and none of us are Greek and none of us are probably going to come back to hang out with each other. So we can't be playing games. These two girls, you, you can hear more about their details in the player story I released earlier today on Patreon. But anyways, so I text her back and I'm really trying to get a sense of what's going on with these girls. So I say to her, well, do you want to go out one-on-one -on -one with the homie? Because even though she's messaging me, I thought she wanted to mess with the homie. And the reason she wasn't messaging him because he doesn't have an international phone plan. So I said, yeah, do you want to you want to catch up with the homie one-on-one? -on -one? Because if she said that, that let me know that we could do the divide thing. And as soon as we're dividing and we're one-on-one, -on -one, oh, it's smash time. You dig? So then I go ahead and she... um. He hits me back and asks me, do I want to hang out with her or do I want to deal with her friend? And her friend didn't have my contact information. That's why I was talking to her. So she's like kind of like the operator for all four of us. You dig? She's the central information hub. So she asked, did I want to deal with her friend? I said, yeah, I do want to deal with your friend. But at one point she used the word friend. She said, we're all friends. And I was like, so like that's out. Like we're not friends. I'm not your buddy and I don't want to be your buddy. So like, as far as that goes, like, nah. And then she replies, she says, oh, well, no, she didn't mean friends like that. Her first language is French and she doesn't know you that well. So that's why she used that word, just like meaning like unfamiliar. I was like, okay, for sure. Tell her to bang my line then. She was like, all right, cool. Now here's the funny thing. The homie, I'm with the homie right then. And so he's like, you know, like, I'm going to go ahead and hit up her friend. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's see what it do. Now, mind you, at this point, it's like 6 a.m., right? So he hits up her friend like, yo, what's up? Then the friend, this is lying part three from females. The friend that he hits up, the tall one, she says, um, because he texted her, he said, hey, come through to the hotel, which I love. You know, it's a beautiful thing, right? Where it's 6.38 a.m., you telling her to pull up at your hotel, you already know what's popping. So anyways, uh, she replies and she says, I'm, I'm at the hospital. Now, if you are at the hospital, number one, we don't believe that. But if you are at the hospital, why are you texting us at all? Number two, what can you do on an island like this to end up at a hospital? Nothing good. Number three, if you're at the hospital, not because you're hurt, but because your friend's hurt, why are you trying to set her up with me? So something's not adding up and the girl is too silly to realize that he and I are right next to each other. She's probably thinking that because it's 6.30 a.m. We're probably at our different hotel rooms, right? But at the end of the day, what you're going to find with females is that A, they're manipulators and B, when you're dealing with an average woman and if you're intelligent, she is to you compared to you, low IQ. And the funny thing is uh, dumb people think that they can lie to you successfully because they're too dumb to realize they can't. So she's basically lying and not realizing that we're observing this the whole time and just chuckling. Now, here's the thing I, I said for the haters, I'm gonna let them know what's on my schedule. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. To and by tomorrow, I mean later today. I'm about to take a nap. Actually, I'm not about to take a nap. I'm about to go and have breakfast. And then after breakfast, I'm going to take a nap. And then I'm gonna wake up. And on my schedule is 
Nicolina. We got Nicolina's going to come through and hang out at the pool. Yidig. And then the day after that, we have Natasha. Natasha's going to go to dinner with me after she gets off of work. So we're going to have dinner at 10 p.m. People stay up late here, right? So we're starting dinner at 10 p.m. You know we're going to go from dinner to the club, and we're going to go from the club to getting a little bit of love, right? That's kind of how that goes. So it's a beautiful thing. We got them lined up. And that's the whole thing that you have to understand. The reason I never trip on a female lying is because I know they're dirtbags off the rip. And the only reason they start to lie is not because they're entirely evil, but because they want you to esteem them. They want you to think well of them. There's very few of them that are so grimy that they just don't care and they're just going to let you know, yeah, I'm a slut, right? You know, like that almost never happens, right? So I got them lined up like that. And it's a beautiful thing because I can go out, spit game for the entertainment. And then I still got my my regulars, not regulars, because I don't live in Greece, right? But I still got my Greek girls lined up. Yiddick. Okay, let's see who's supporting the work. Now, mind you, this is wild because we have 1,000 folks viewing, less than 300 likes. And for the 1,000 folks viewing, there's not even like... 25 cents per person contributed. And this is why we live in this kind of world because we don't show love. We don't show appreciation, right? Like we go out and don't value people. We don't value ourselves. We don't represent ourselves well. It's so easy to click the like button. You don't hear me on here saying, hey, you're watching this content for free. It's my valuable time. Send a, send intuition. I don't say that. But clicking the like button it's just a courtesy. I don't look at it as something you have to do to improve my outcomes. I look at it as something that shows me that you have respect, shows me you have appreciation. And as a saint, I always tell you guys that if there's something that's easy to do, meaning it doesn't cost you much, but it'll make the other person feel really good, you should always do it because it's easy to do and it, it gives you a good feeling and it gives you an advantage. But hey, sometimes my words fall on deaf ears. Anyways, that's the kind of stuff that makes me wrap this stuff up, uh, you know, sooner than later, um, because I could instead use this time for my members. Shout out to Vancho. He writes, long live the sass. No, true indeed. We're building a movement here, folks. Absolutely. Shout out to Sherlock Stoner, who sends intuition via cash. I truly appreciate it. I actually had the pleasure of meeting the stoner himself uh, via consultation. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions, uh, feel free uh, to send them in via PayPal or Cash App or super chat, I'll answer your questions um, right now, and then I'll probably head into breakfast, whether it's questions about women being dishonest, or stories you want to share, or perspective you want to get, or even questions about Mykonos, Greece, because I, I think we understand that most people might not have the opportunity to come out. EMG writes, first donation, you are right, Marquette, and I call it tuition, because a donation is giving something for nothing. Uh, this is tuition, I'm giving you practical things you can use in your real life. You dig. And that's a, that's a little bit of a different thing. Shout out to Pafindron. He's a loyal supporter for some time. Shout out to Sherlock. He writes, that was for my brother. Oh, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay, we have via PayPal. I think someone else came through. Nope, that was the same one. Shout out to Jesus. He writes, tuition, peace of the saints. ID in the chat. Um, not sure what ID means. Patrick writes, what you see isn't always what you get. Well, you know what? If you're a wise man, what you see, you should see the truth of who the female is. You know, anytime I see a woman who's visiting Las Vegas or visiting Miami on a girl's trip, or visiting Mykonos, or visiting Tulum, I always know that they're up to no good. And especially if they have an average job, I know that they're probably being sponsored. Shout out to Brian, he writes, Peace to the Saints. I know that they're being sponsored, and if a female is being sponsored, surely she's not getting something for nothing, which is to say that she's not getting a free flight, free hotel accommodations, and then expenses covered without doing something in return. As I've said many times, there are various forms of, um, oh, Sherlock writes, it was my brother that you met. Okay, got you, got you. Appreciate that, Sherlock. Thank you for the uh, clarification. Yeah, so they're, they're not getting something for nothing. 
So I already knew who these women were. And let me give you guys a piece of advice, which is that when you encounter a woman in an environment such as this, obviously you should be very aggressive because time is not on your side. And then secondly, you should use language of openness, not language of judging, because anytime women feel judged, they're gonna shut down, they're going to hide, and they're going to deceive. Lastly, being that they're not there to make significant connections, having deep conversation or doctor filling the female is unnecessary and counterproductive when really you should just be trying to get the chicken to the bar so that you guys can dance or have a couple drinks and then move that on to the hotel. Now, these chicks are so you know thirsty and attention hungry that they're going to want to spend some amount of time dancing no matter what, even if they want to get smashed. They want to spend some amount of time on the scene, even if their whole goal is to get smashed. It's a, quite a funny thing because women, as I said, are not linear, meaning they don't want to get straight to the point. They want to enjoy the whole process, right? Like consider men. When we have intercourse, we want to get a nut off. When women have intercourse, they want the whole experience, the foreplay, the lengthy intercourse, the second round, the multiple orgasms. There's always just so much involved. There's very little simplicity uh, with females for the most part. And that's whether they're good or bad people. Most of them are bad people. Shout out to Kyle. He writes, any tips to sniff out a good female liar? Thank you for taking your time to educate us, Saint. Well, I think one of the core lessons from this um, experience is that location, 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 similar to real estate, which is to say, if you meet a female in the club, you did not stumble upon the one good girl. No, they're trash. And let me even share with you a lie that was perpetrated on the, the saint that's with me. The young lady, when he said, come through to the hotel, she replied saying, I'm not that kind of girl. Uh, I'm sorry, you are that kind of girl or else you wouldn't be here in Mykonos. You're a liar. And sometimes when women like you, they lie to you even more. That's the irony. And so when you hear people talking about these goofy pickup artist strategies, um, you know, they think they can control the woman or control their, the nature of the female or what she's likely to do. That's not the case. What you're really doing is running strategy around who she already is. You can't change who she is. You understand? So what I'm saying to you is this. You'll be able to identify that female liar, one, by the environment in which you meet her. If you meet her in the club and she's a stripper or you meet her in a nightclub and she's there to party, you can assume she's a person of very little value. Further, one thing that I noted with this chick was that she pulled out a cigarette once we got to the bar. I didn't even know she smoked. And as soon as she did that, I was like, oh yeah, this chick is low quality. Those are the things you have to watch for. And you just have to respect the truth and not deny it when you encounter it. Shout out to Gadget. He writes, proud to give tuition. That's a beautiful thing. He writes, thoughts on girls that ride motorcycles. FYI, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with a girl riding a motorcycle. I know a Ukrainian chick with a real nice rack that rides a motorcycle. She's a nice person. She also salsa dances. She's, she's cool, cool individual. And one thing I like that the saint said is he writes, proud to give tuition. What you find is when you're a real mature man, when you receive value, you want to give something in exchange. Why? Because it's a fair thing to do. When you're an honorable man, you are a fair person. And when you have means, you are willing to utilize those means. You should never be miserly or parsimonious, meaning that you got to pay what you owe. A man is often positioned as the provider. You can't complain about that role. Just as you expect a woman to do her job, you got to be happy doing your job, whatever that may be. Shout out to Jacob. He writes, Peace of the Saints. How do I get go about increasing my social standing slash status among peers and just in general? You increase your status by achieving. And you achieve in a remarkable way when you focus narrowly on that which you are most talented at, something that you have an advantage in. That's how you do it. And this is going to come from hours of practice, meaning that when people are wasting time and money, drinking alcohol, you know, hanging in the clubs like they're a bar stool, you're doing things that are adding up to your goal, which is something that is repeatedly targeted on the same goal. You become good at shooting three-pointers by shooting three-pointers. Nothing else will substitute for that. And you have to do that more frequently than anyone else and with more focus than anyone else. 
Thank you for your question, Saint. I'm happy to see that you are trying to improve and exceed your peers. And remember, the key is to focus on action, not thinking. We often think too much. Shout out to Charlie. Good to see you, Saint. He writes, hi, Marquette. I found the right female counterpart to assist me on camera. Talk soon, peace of saints. Oh, yeah, shout out. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, feel free to shoot me a link when you get that uh, content up. Excited to see how it improves. Earshul writes, enjoy some... Impugasta on me, if that's your thing, Saint Tuition, Peace of the Saints. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to try that. I'm going to have to try, um, is it shlosh? I can't even remember. These Greek words I'm not doing terribly well with, but I have a number of dishes to try. And the great thing is that the Greek food is delicious. I enjoy Mediterranean food. Shout out to Ben. He writes, good point. Focus. Oh, absolutely. Focus is the separator. You see, it's not, it's not IQ. It's not intelligence. It's focus. How often do you come back to this same goal? How often do you practice? How often do you obsess over this one thing? That is going to send you over the edge. That obsession is going to get you to the next level. Yeah, it's really easy work once you, once you get it down to that level. And let me give you guys another... Um, note like the saint and I were out yesterday exercising, you know, some gyms here. It's just not a part of the experience. So when we're out there jump roping, people are literally um, taking video and photo uh, footage of us exercising. Why? Because the jumping rope is a skilled practice that most people have not tried and surely have not mastered at the level that we have. So they're appreciating seeing a skilled exercise. Further, seeing people who are that fit is not common. So when you do something with regularity, consistency, and discipline, you will always see the reward from it. People appreciate, respect, and admire that, especially when they look at it and say, I can't do that, which is not true. But that's how they feel, and that's what their habits had, have led them to understand. Shout out to Morka. He writes, finally caught alive. Unfortunately, have to be up early tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. Tuition, peace of saints. I appreciate that, saying, and I totally understand having to be up early. Keep those priorities in order. Jolik writes, paying tuition. Do you have any tips on finding in-person mentors? Yes, I do. Get to work. So whatever goal you want to achieve, once you get to work on pursuing that goal within that industry, you will be aware of those who are most successful and those are the persons locally that you should pursue, right? Are there any ways I could offer value in exchange for mentorship? Go in there honest, go in there humble, and go in there willing to do whatever they ask and making an offering of your time and your unique skills at no cost. He further writes, I'm a music producer and I don't want to be someone taking without giving back. You'd be wise because... No one wants to be used. Sorrow says that the question is in the chat. Remember that I'm on, I'm holding my phone. So there's a very small window. So it's easier for me to read your question if you send it by a cash app or PayPal because it, it won't disappear as the super chats um, or, or as the chats move by. Mike writes, I buy your t-shirts, books, etc. And yes, it's Rolls Royce quality but I do show appreciation for what you've taught me and I have taught my friends and family. Shout out to Mike. This is true. Mike is a tremendous supporter, but most importantly, Mike executes on the knowledge. The thing that is a blessing to me, a blessing to Mike and a blessing to the whole assassin is when someone gets a hold of the ism and they learn it and use it. I am happy to see that because I know that you are going to grow in your wealth, you're going to grow in your relationship, and you're going to grow in your health. And those are all things that are going to benefit our community and most importantly, make the world a better place. You'll become a positive influence. And so I'm happy to see that. And it's always a pleasure to see this thing growing through the efforts of wise men. And what I mean by that is that no one wants to convert to any belief system without seeing the fruits of it. The only reason people listen to me is because they know that everything I talk about, these are the things that have led me out of poverty. 
So I'm not just making up things. And what's more is I'm telling you things that are tried and true and repeatable. You guys might not ever be able to become a YouTube influencer or a social media star or content creator. So I never make videos about that because I think that's not a considerate thing for me to do, which is to try to teach you how to do something that only 1% of people can be successful at. But I teach you how to create product and put that on the market because 100% of you can put product on the market. And you see when people do consultations with me, I'm always wearing their, their merch, I'm sharing information about where you can buy their services. And in many cases, if they're smart enough to say, hey, um, list my product on assassin.com, we take 10%, give them 90%. That's better than any platform you can find, Etsy, Amazon, anything. And they're selling out of their product and they're starting successful businesses. And that's what I do because I want you guys to be prosperous. I want people to be able to sit here and send a hundred bucks like it's nothing because I want it to be nothing to you. I want to see that prosperity. That's what we're here for, to enjoy. Not that money brings enjoyment in life, but rather money allows you to magnify that which you are. And what we teach is to be one who understands truth, respects it, appreciates it, and pursues prosperity. Once you have truth and you're comfortable with that, you're going to be happy. You dig? And once you're happy, you can use your money to multiply your happiness, not only for yourself, but also your family. So I will write, so I'm going to put the question in the chat real quick. Okay, go ahead, man. Um, Mike got to that one. Okay, cool. I think we're caught up. Looks like someone is spamming with. Uh, Chinese characters. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide that user. Cool. All right. <laughs> yes, the individual has been banned. All right. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Steve Joseph. Came through via Cash App. He writes, Peace to Saints tuition. I truly appreciate that. And Steve Joseph is one of the loyal saints and these are the kind of folks that I'm honored to know. These are the kind of saints that I'm honored to have within the Sassin and be a part of community with. If you ever know someone that's such a good person that you're happy to know them, you know, that's, that's how I think of the Sassin. And I can't wait until we, we build this movement even more so that no matter where you are in the world, you have people who are there with you in person because there's a lot of wicked folks around and, and the more we're together, the more we can make sure that, you know, we get our due respect. You dig? Uh, shout out to No Love. Since through the, is that a pound or is that a euro? Help me out. Shout out to Lil Cash Kid. He writes, Quet, will you ever release that shirt you're wearing? This is a sweatshirt, actually. And I actually already did release it. This is a sweatshirt. And this sweatshirt was legendary at the airport. You dig? When I was flying over here, uh, man, people were, were loving the sweatshirt. Uh, let me see where you can easily click. I think if you click in the description, um, if you go to my link tree, it might have the, the link to the Amazon. screen keeps going off. Let me see if I plug this in. It'll help. Let's see. Cool. All right, folks. Um, let me see. All right, here we are. Let me address these questions. Uh, shout out to Dark Matter Reality TV. He writes, uh, never jump rope till your challenge. Oh, beautiful thing. He writes, I have 45-minute jump rope sessions now. <laughs> Thanks for the inspiration. Bro, 45 minutes is serious. I don't even, I've never tried to get up to 45. Uh, I think I've probably, most I've ever done is 30 minutes, which is significant. I did 20 today um, after a run and also 20 yesterday, which is it's light work, but 45 is crazy. So you're in great shape. You're in excellent cardio condition, Saint. It's a beautiful thing. I'm glad that you're getting after it. K Singh writes, what are some ways to give your women purpose if you are a nine to five guy? Your analysis on the Four Horsemen podcast was full of gems. I quit smoking and drinking because of all of this game. Thanks. That's a beautiful thing. I'm so happy to hear that because I am staunchly against drinking and smoking. And I am vehemently in favor of you being your best self. And you are so much better when you're not 
smelling of nicotine and tobacco. You're respecting your own hygiene. You're smelling better now and you're feeling better because your respiratory systems are not under attack. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for helping yourself and helping the world. The world's a better place when there's a better you. Now, you should have goals in three areas. Number one, financial. Number two, relationship. And number three, health. You can give your woman purpose by helping you, uh, helping you pursue those goals in those three areas and also making sure she has goals in those three areas and also make sure that you have a way of uh, celebrating once you achieve those goals. So that's how you get that done. Chateau Emmanuel came right back. I think this is his third time super chatting. And this is exactly why I'm not a socialist, mind you. People often complain, socialists complain about, well, why aren't things equal? Things aren't equal because some people work harder than other people. Some people contribute more than other people. Emmanuel's super chatted three times. Some people have watched my content for years, literally, and super chatted zero times. So if he puts in more, why should they get rewarded at the level that Emmanuel gets rewarded, right? Further, you got way more people watching than have liked the video. So that's why socialism doesn't make sense. There's no such thing as equality because people don't put in equal effort, yet so many people want equal outcomes. And that's why I teach you guys how to hustle so you can get the best out of this world for yourself because no one's going to give it to you. You got to earn it. You got to take it. So shout out to the saints who are out here earning, out here taking, out here investing, out here giving. It's a, it's a meaningful thing and it separates you from so much of humankind who live in scarcity. Once you learn about investing, you'll understand how the world really works. You know, recently I was showing a young lady all the product lines that I have. By recently, I mean a couple of weeks ago, showing her all the product lines I have and how much money I have invested in each of these products, whether it's product development. Like I got a, a, a fashion sneaker, luxury fashion sneaker being developed. I put a lot of money into it. I also have a, a shipment of boxing shoes on their way here. I've not even announced it. And that I invested a lot of money into just to buy the inventory. I also have gold watches custom made from scratch that I'm developing. Those I think have arrived at my address in the United States. I'm in Europe right now, obviously. Um, but I've invested so much money. And to me, I don't want my money sitting in my bank account because every dollar you have is like a slave. And I want my slaves working hard. When you let your dollars sleep in your banking account, they're dying. I want my dollars out working, marching, working themselves to death. So I'd much rather lose a dollar on an investment than leave a dollar to sleep in my bank account. Because the thing about a dollar working in an investment is that $1 might turn into $1.30. That $1 might turn into $1.50. When you're doing it at scale, that means $100,000 is turning into $150,000. And we can do something with that, right? From a place of fear instead of a place of abundance. And you can see that in the way people behave. How much, uh, how much of a lack are you living in when you, can't, you don't have enough abundance to click a like button? It just shows your mentality, right? And, and that's what the difference is between the saints and the wicked. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the difference right there. The saints are trying to grow. They're trying to lead. They're trying to stretch. The wicked are complacent, they're lazy, they're living in a small box and they're scared to get out because they don't know what's outside of the box. They're not doing things differently. I want my words to get under your skin. I want you to wake up today and do something you haven't done before. Take a risk. Shoot your shot at a girl you've been waiting to shoot your shot at. Huh? I want you to go ahead and you know make an investment in a business idea or make an investment in yourself or buy a book you, you didn't buy because you thought it cost too much. Screw what it costs. Jim Rohn says it's not what it costs you to buy the book. It's what it will cost you if you don't read the book. Huh? That's why, and what you'll notice with people with wealthy mindsets, whether they're wealthy in fact financially or they just have an abundance mindset, they don't even waste time with people who are not on the same page. For example, there's sometimes like you, you notice I try to respond to my comments, especially, like, especially if they're on patreon.com slash the same the center. I want to respond. And if people uh, DM me, I'm of course going to respond if they're DMing on Patreon. And every now and then I might get around to a couple of YouTube comments. But if I see someone write, well, how much does the audio book cost? I don't even reply. 
I don't even want that business. I don't even want their business. I don't even want to make a sale to a person who says, how much does the audiobook cost? Because it doesn't matter. Right now, you know I have good product. So whatever I priced it at, that's what you need to buy it at. Because guess what? I didn't make my fortune on audiobooks. I made my fortune in technology. Uh-huh. The audiobook is a contribution to society. So whatever it costs, you better go out and get it because I didn't make it to make a profit. I made it to make you get off your butt and run after your dreams. I made it to make you stop having pity on yourself and thinking that the world's been so cruel to you, you can't be successful because you were born into the wrong family. Your parents don't support you. Your girlfriend doesn't really love you. I made it to help you get past that mentality. What you can benefit from good knowledge is infinite. What you pay for a book is meaningless. Would I invest $10, $50, $60 to figure out how to make myself a million dollars or how to make myself happy on a regular basis? Of course, absolutely I would. The thing is, sometimes some of us have such little self-regard that we won't invest $10 or $60 or $20, whatever it is, on ourself. That's bad. You understand? I want you to value yourself enough that you are willing to invest in yourself because you're important. And I don't care what anybody thinks of you. You have to think you're important. I don't care if your mama thinks you're a low-down, dirty dog. I don't care if no woman will talk to you or look at you or compliment you. Compliment yourself. I give you permission. I was just looking at my fingernails thinking they're lovely, nice, clean, and long. A mark of my leisurely life, which I enjoy. I look in the mirror, say, who's the most player of them all? Yeah, nothing wrong with complimenting yourself. Losers will call you narcissistic. Why? Because they have low self-esteem. So when they see you with high self-esteem, it makes them feel small. But someone with high self-esteem not only can compliment themselves, they can also compliment others. Because they see a beautiful world. You dig? Shout out to Sarah. He writes, I respect it. Basically, do you know any good fabric store slash tailors who can make custom clothing in LA? I don't. Um, and you probably don't want to get clothing made custom in LA because that's extra expensive. There's a ton of fabric places like um, the Garment District, for example. If you go to the Garment District in downtown Los Angeles, tons of fabric. If you're going to get something made, I, I recommend you try to find yourself a Latino seamstress. Generally, a female makes dresses for a quinceanera or something like that. And she might be able to hook you up something. But... Uh, Better case scenario, you wouldn't do that. And one thing I want to advise you on, Sorrow, being a young man, if you're going to make something custom for yourself, ask yourself, are there other people who would like this particular style? Are there enough people who would like it? And if there are, it's worth taking a shot at mass producing it. You know what I'm saying? You really want to always ask yourself, how many birds can I knock out with this one stone? Shout out to Nap, sends through the Canadian cab, saying is prosperous. He writes, how do you feel... Or how do you deal with self-doubt? Not every business venture will succeed. Most of them won't succeed. You deal with self-doubt by understanding that most people on the planet Earth are not confident. They're pretending for various reasons and at various levels. Even Mike Tyson in his interviews will tell you he was scared before most of his fights. Did he ever look scared? No, he did not. That's why Marquette Devon Burton told you to proceed like a fearless lunatic. Huh? Secondly, he writes, I'm struggling with self-doubt in starting a business even though I have two engineering degrees. Well, I can promise you your educational degrees will not be any estimate of your ability to be a successful entrepreneur, but what they do evidence is your ability to persist. And if you can persist, you will be successful in business. And if you can get good advice you have an advantage. So I would seek out good advice. And when you have good advice, meaning you're operating your business based on sound principles that are tried and true, you have a better shot at being successful. In business, you want to take every advantage that you can. Can you realistically compete against someone who's building a technology company and they have the advice of people who have already done it and you're trying to do it without any advice? Just 
you know, guessing at things. No, you can't compete. So go ahead and seek those advantages. And guess what? Once you secure those advantages, you're going to feel confident because you know you have something other people don't have. Huh? Shout out to Upular. Good to see you again. He writes, hey, Quet, I want to make my own shorts. Is this second conference footage of making a product a good starting point? Absolutely. It's the perfect place to start. And there's a very long lecture that describes how to make your own product in detail. So I highly recommend you um, get, get after it. In Sorrow, I recommend the same thing. Um, and if you need the contact information for the manufacturers for that jersey shirt you wanted to make, just email, um, send me an email to my email address. Austin writes, how do I find a product to sell if I'm struggling with ideas? Well, if you're struggling with ideas, you're not either A, you're not an idea person or B, you don't have the requisite experience to be able to look at the world and identify needs in the market. And that's okay. It, it might take time and education. He writes, I've been helping my dad with his service-based business, but I believe product-based business is the wave and want to make the switch. I wouldn't call it a wave because waves go up and down. Product-based business has always been good since ever, and it will always be good. So it's not well described as a wave, but how do you find a product to sell? You can check out the conference two footage, which might be linked on the link tree in the description. And in there, I give you specific steps on how you can find a product to sell. Secondly, in consultations with saints, I often help them identify a product or what I'll do is I'll get a sense of your skill set and then I'll give you a product of mine to work on, meaning it's my product, you're just working on it so you can learn the process of dealing with manufacturers, developing samples, doing product development, doing marketing, putting it on a platform, tracking the sales. And usually in the process of doing that, you know what happens? I'll tell you what happens. Marcos, for example, had a number of consultations with me. Then he came back. He said, hey, Marquette, I've come up with three product ideas. I said, let me hear what they are. We talked through them. I loved one of the ideas, so we put it into play. Uh, a second idea I thought was pretty good, so we put it into play. Third idea, I was like, eh, we still put it into play. And I know that he's going to do a good job with it because he's had experience and practice. So that's the key. When you're learning, when you're early in something, you imitate. That's the earliest stage of learning. Just like when kids are learning language, they just repeat what you said, even though they don't know what it means. Imitation is how learning starts. But eventually, you'll be able to get into the creation phase. And that's the process that I take people through. Thank you for that question. I encourage you to continue down your path of uh, entrepreneurship. You will be successful. Shout out to Cameron. He writes, peace, brother Marquette. I'm almost done reading The Black Box. And I must say you are a tremendous and an amazing person. I really appreciate that. Thank you. He writes, stay strong, stay proud, stay inspired. Sir, yes, sir. Really appreciate that heartfelt compliment. Jason writes, peace, king. Was wondering if your audio book will be on audio Audible anytime soon. No, it will not be on Audible ever because I don't want to share the proceeds of my labor with strangers. And I don't think that their split is anywhere near fair. So I, I don't do any business with Audible. My book is on Amazon if you want the paperback because I do a lot of business with Amazon. And my book, if you want a lower cost copy, you can get that at thesassin.com. The audio book is also available at thesassin.com as well. That's T H E S A S N dot com. So appreciate that. Okay. And let me go ahead and check PayPal and Cash App. I have to make sure that I show love to those who show love to me. I certainly could not skip anyone. That would not be like me. Shout out to Isaiah. He writes, Would also, never spend more than five minutes on some women. Get in quick, move on. That is an excellent point. And one thing I do want to, I just want to say that's a great point. I agree wholeheartedly. Most women are not worth five minutes. And it, that's all it takes you to figure out what's up. What I will say is that I enjoy the process as well. 
You know, I enjoy spinning game. I enjoy talking SHIT to a female. I enjoy complimenting them. I enjoy confusing them. I enjoy all of that. I am a ladies' man. You dig? That's, I'm a ladies' man. So I enjoy all of it. I breathe it out and I inhale it. When they lie, I, I chuckle at it. You know, it's just a part of the game. If this is the game that you play, that's a part of it. So, you know, you got to know who you are and, you know, play accordingly. So, for example, if I spend any amount of time with a female and she doesn't end up getting smashed, like, that's okay. You know, there's, there's no problem with that. Like, I, I enjoyed the process. And sometimes people... You know, they're doing things where they don't enjoy the process. They only enjoy the outcome. I enjoy the process and the outcome. And that's why the game is so good because I'm enjoying like getting to the end. Like I, I like to, you know, I like the, to play the game and I like to win the game as well. You dig? Dominique Jackson writes, you enjoy confusing women. Oh, absolutely. You see, everyone likes a riddle. You know, everyone likes a puzzle or, you know, when a magician does a trick on you, you are confused because you don't know how they did it, but you still enjoy it. And as a real game spitter, you're working a magic on a woman. You're enchanting her. And often you'll leave her confused. How do you do that? You know, how do you get me in this position? So I enjoy that. So just to clarify for you, there's some things that women don't understand, but they're happy that you were able to do it. For example, the chicks that we were dealing with earlier today, the saint had eventually uh, initially approached him and he said, hey, you guys are Americans, right? And they're like, yeah. Eventually, they both said that they're first generation, meaning their parents are immigrants. I said, don't tell me where. I'll tell you where. And I only need one guess. They look at each other like, oh, okay. And then I look at the blonde one. I say, Poland. Then her eyes open up wide and she looks at her friend like, who in the hell is this man? See, what she doesn't realize is that she probably is looking at me like an average black guy or an average Joe, but I'm the big homie. And what she doesn't comprehend is that I have enough experience traveling around the world, doing business with many people and seeing people in their countries and really soaking up who they are, how they look, how they walk, how they behave, how they cut a cake, huh? that I have a fine enough filter to filter you out from other types of white people, other types of European. And I said, Polish, without a second of thought. And she said, whoa, right? So she was confused. How'd you do that? How'd you figure that out? Let me tell you what's crazier. And these are true stories. Let me tell you what's crazier. Then the homie says, I got you to the brunette. He says, Italian, eyes open up wide again. And they're over here like, oh, heck no. How did you know that? He says, well, I grew up with an Italian family and you are familiar. I knew you were Italian, full-blooded. There are very few people on the planet Earth that can do those things. Because of that, it's confusing. And it goes back to what I said before, which is the idea that anytime you can stack up experience, you have an advantage. Anytime you do something more than everyone else does it, you'll be better at it than everyone else. The reason she's shocked that I could pick out that she's Polish, what she doesn't know is I've been over 80 countries. Now, there's only like 211, if I'm not mistaken, but I've been to over 80 countries. And if you know anything about me, when I pull up in a country, I don't pull up for two days and I don't pull up and stay in the resort. I get on the bus and ride the bus and just get off at a random stop. I go into somebody's country, I go play soccer. If that's what y'all play, I'm playing soccer with you. I'm playing basketball with you. Huh? Yeah, like I'm really in there. So my experience and ability to soak up culture is going to be remarkable compared to the average person. And so she just thought she was dealing with an average person, not realizing that I have the requisite experience to say, you're Polish. And you want to be able to do that in the important areas of life. There's some areas of life where you have experience, but your experience doesn't pay. Like if you're a, an expert on Pokemon cards, well, that probably doesn't pay much. If you're great at video games, well, that probably doesn't pay much. Yeah, sure, there's a couple people getting paid for video games, but it probably doesn't pay much. So you have to think about where you're going to invest your time and what you can use. Men should be outcomes oriented. 
Shout out to Rienzi, comes through by a cash app. He writes, can you make socks with the Cherub logo? Rienzi, there are two staple products that I've been working on very hard. And I've even like, you know, no homo, but I'm actually wearing a pair of the boxer briefs that I created, no homo. I'm gonna just give you a little uh, glimpse. These are the Marilyn Monroe boxer briefs that I made, you dig? Um, so I really do work a, a ton on product. I don't know if you guys are able to actually see that, but I work a ton on product. And if I can't do it the right way, I don't release it. So that like socks, for example, and boxer briefs, I'm working on for like over a year. No kidding. And I just, it's not, I've not gotten it right. And so I haven't been able to release it. So I want to, but finding the quality, the proper thickness, the proper durability, the proper uh, quick dry material, getting the manufacturers who can really do it, it's just hasn't worked out. And what I want you guys to understand is that persistence overcomes resistance. It just takes time. And another thing you should know about me is I got like 60 products in the lap right now, right? So, you know, you, you see things popping up and then, you know, other things take longer. But I appreciate that, Rienzi, and hopefully we can get that staple product uh, completed. And I know once I do complete it, it'll be at a loss, meaning when I sell boxer briefs or, or socks, I'll be selling it at a loss because those are not profitable products unless you're selling them at huge scale. And we don't have that kind of scale, but I want to do that for the future of the Sassin because underwear and socks are something that everyone needs. And I want us to be able to get that from one another. And what we'll be able to do is that eventually um, when saints need jobs, we can give them jobs because we're producing so many products. Or when saints need a product-based business to run, we can give them a product. So all of this is with a master plan in mind, but we need your support. I need your support. I need your loyalty and consistency because so few people are consistent. So few people are loyal. And so few people believe in anything or stand for anything. And that's why there's such a big effort for us to collect together among one another. So I just really hope people understand the greater vision and what we're trying to achieve and how important it is. Because in a place like Mykonos in Greece, you have money and sex and just like, it's, that's just wickedness really. And I sit here observing the thinking and behavior of people and it's mostly disgusting and the world needs so much change. But even among all those bad things, there's still saints here, but they're disconnected and isolated. For example, me and the, the saint who's here, we had went to a store. He purchased a jacket. Kid you not, he left a bag of money, literally a bag of money on accident. He left thousands of euros at the store and we left out. And when we started walking down the street, a Greek woman called out to us a different Greek woman. And she said, hey, come here. And then we walked over and she said, your, your cell phone's in your back pocket. You don't want it in your back pocket. You might get pickpocketed. In your backpack, you should turn around, put it on your chest so that no one can reach in and unzip anything. We said, thank you. We appreciate that. Can you recommend a restaurant? So she starts describing where to go to the restaurant. This gave us enough time in that same area to where the, the woman at the store we just left ran out and she found us. And she said, hey, did you forget something? And he looks down, he's like, well, I got my jacket that I just bought, so no. She's like, did you forget anything else? He's like, mm, I got my sunglasses. No, no, I don't think so. And she says, your money. And he's like, oh, and then we go back, every penny of it was there. Or I should say every euro. And that woman was a saint, the woman who held onto his money and ran out to find us. The woman who stopped us to tell us to be cautious of pickpockets and thieves, she was a saint. If the second woman was not saintly enough to give us that loving advice, we would have been too far away for the first woman to find us to let us know that the saint had left his cash. So I say that to say there, there are good people everywhere, even in, in a place like Mykonos, which is, you know, money, power, sex, and, you know, all that stuff mixed up. But we're disconnected. And when we're disconnected, there's no power in that. And the wicked people are so linked up, you dig? Like, I almost don't even like walking anywhere dolo anymore because people try to take advantage of you when they think they can get the easy advantage. And that's why I encourage you guys always to, you know, be together when you can. Come together for exercise. Come together for social things. Come together whenever you have the opportunity. Shout out to Matthew, writes Peace of the Saints. 
Peace to the saints. And shout out to Derek, comes through via Cash App. He writes, peace and blessings, truly grateful for all you do. And I appreciate that. That really means a lot to me because, you know, just like you, sometimes I feel underappreciated. Sometimes I feel as though, you know, you know, when I read some of the comments, I think, wow, like people are not understanding the ism and they're not living out the ism. And so, you know, I really am thankful when people get it, you know, and they live it and they benefit from it. Isaiah writes, I'm searching information on funding for an engineering degree. Any resources to recommend in New Jersey? I would look for financial resources at the institution that you're going to study at. All right, fantastic. Coke Face writes, the modern day iceberg slim, indeed. And shout out to Orion Stoner, comes through, writes, uh, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. Shout out to the Stoner family, you dig? True indeed. And one thing I want you guys to know is that... Um, Kind of escaping me right now. By the way, if any of my women are watching this, you should not be watching this. If any of my women are watching this, you should not be watching this. Don't watch my content. It's not made for you. So cut it off. Okay. Sorry about that, Saints. Sorrow writes, last thing I want to tell you, I put someone on at my school and the next day he said, hey, I really messed with him and I'm going to buy his book and bag just one day in. I appreciate that sorrow. And that's that's a really, um, you know, that's love when you share good things with people because most people just, the only thing they share is the blunt. They share a wet blunt that they didn't slobber it all over. That's the only thing we want to pass out, right? Instead of passing out knowledge, game, and wisdom. So you're doing a good thing and you're growing the assassin, which we all benefit from. CJ writes, appreciate the game. Can't wait for the leather bag, briefcase joints to come in. Me too. Um, as you probably know from the product development video we did a couple weeks ago, it's exclusive on patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center. Talked about the whole process from ideation to creation and completion and marketing. Um, it's already been boxed up and shipped. So right now, those backpack briefcases are at sea being shipped here. And they've been perfectly sealed up. The leather will be pristine when it arrives to you. So this is September. We're expecting it to come end of September, um, latest, early, latest early October. And as soon as we get it, we're mailing it straight out to you. And the reason um, sea freight takes longer is it's generally 30 to 40 days when something is shipped by sea. And obviously, people want to use COVID-19 for every excuse possible. So whether it's DHL or any carrier service, anytime they have a delay, it's COVID-19. Um, it's been the greatest excuse on planet Earth. It's amazing. I hope you all have not succumbed to such thinking. And I hope you all are also living in the present. I have a, a friend of mine, young lady, whom I love dearly, and she had sent me a, a photo of before. Just like, this was my body before I got pregnant. And I was thinking, it doesn't really matter. What about your body today? Like, you can't live in that body. You can only live in your body today. You can't live in a photograph. You know, we can't live on our past achievements. What are we doing today? What's the goal for today? You know, what's ahead of us? What's in our present and what's ahead of us that's exciting? If you're finding that you're excited about the past, that means that we don't have enough set up for the future. And the future should be so bright. You need sunglasses when you look at it. Shout to Upular. He writes, any good questions to build rapport when approaching the most typical seems, where are you from? Well, you may have heard me say, where are you from in this context? Because when you're traveling and you're in a tourist destination that's overpopulated with visitors, expats, or tourists, where are you from has a higher level of meaning than just saying that when you're at your local mall. So I think that context matters. Further, often the opener is unimportant. It's not what you say, it's how you say. And also context is critical in as much as when you're in Mykonos, a place of wealth similar to when you're in Dubai, they want to meet you just as much as you want to meet them because they're assuming that you're wealthy. 
which is highly likely if you can afford to be in either of those places. And because of that, they want to get into a conversation. They want to ask you what you do for a living. They want to figure that out. They will, you know, they're not contextual things that make it easier, which is why the where are you from comes into play. But anytime you can gamify that and make it a little more clever, you'll be wise. So for example, if you make a guess that's a little more exciting or interesting or entertaining than saying, where are you from? Or if you walked up on someone and said, you know, based on those shoes, I think you're Italian. You know, something that just adds a little more sauce on it rather than it being a plain sandwich. How? The how is always more important than the what, right? Like we might all be wearing a sweatshirt, but we're not all wearing a sweatshirt that is going to make people laugh when they see it. Like I had some older white ladies at the airport. This sweater says, I identify as a white woman. And when they saw this, bro, I'm telling you, they bust out laughing. One white lady came up to me and she said, where can I get one of those? And I said, well, let's be real here. Is it going to be funny if you're wearing a sweatshirt that says, I identify as a white woman? I was like, you need a sweatshirt with me on it that says, I identify as a black man. And then she busts up laughing again. So you know, what am I wearing a sweatshirt, but how am I doing it? I'm doing it in a super player way that's remarkable. People are making remarks about the sweatshirt. So whatever you do, you should first ask yourself, A, should I do this? If I can't do this in an exceptional way, it's probably not worth doing most of the time. And then the second thing is, okay, if I'm going to do this, how can I be player with it, right? How can I defy expectations? That's how you need to be looking at the situation. Where's the back door? How can I be different about this? Lord Commander writes, where are you from? Where are your people from? Where where your granny stay? Peace to the saints. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, it's funny. All right, saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to send in your, your last questions, thoughts, comments, or tuition to answer uh, the saints' lyrics. Where am I from? Uh, from many places due to poverty. But if you read my book, you'll see that I went to elementary school in Los Angeles Unified School District. Went to high school in Pasadena Unified School District, which is within Los Angeles County. And my grandmother stayed in San Diego when I was very young and then stayed in uh, Pasadena when I was there. And then eventually she moved out. But You'd say the origins of my family are San Diego. Rienzi writes, for the vision is beautiful and I'll play my part. I appreciate that. We all must play our part. You dig? Man, if everybody could just play their part in the world, wouldn't the world be a lovely place? The good thing is that we don't have to hope we can get things done, saints. And that's what it's about. Getting the job done, not wasting your time thinking or complaining. Let me make sure that we're all caught up. Jeremy writes, Mark, have you fallen in love? If so, has a girl done you dirty? A, everyone's fallen in love, even if they say they have not. And B, everyone's been done dirty, but it's just levels to things, right? Like if you ask me right now to think of how a girl's done me dirty, I honestly, I can't lie to you. I can't even think of anything, if I'm being honest with you. Which is to say, I haven't been done dirty at a significant level. Like I can't really think of anything in particular right now. Um, but we've all been done dirty. And I think a part of that is just my mentality that I don't hold on to, to trauma. I don't make things into trauma and I keep my eyes on good things, you know? And if you're focused on good things, then you won't really be concerned with like your, your complaints and your woes. You'll be more so concerned with well, who's my next girl going to be and what's my goal for that relationship. John writes, my mom likes to wash my clothes, make my plates and do things in general for me, but I'm 18 and I grew up in the hood. How should I look at this? Well, it's fine. Um, you'd probably want to figure out how to wash your own clothes before you move out. That was a mistake that um, my family had. I had to learn how to wash clothes in college. It's better to get an in-person demonstration. making sure that I'm caught. Forgive me if the stream's cut off um, any number of times. I, I don't know why it would be doing that. But it looks like I am caught up here. Well, Saints, it's been truly a pleasure to um, fellowship here with you all. 
and appreciate that support, Jeremy. I see you in the comments always supporting. Let us end this the way we always end this with the Creed of the Assassin. Uh, and just by the way, when this one disappears, um, like don't comment on another video and say, hey, where was that one video? It's for the members. It goes up at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner, which is where all of our content goes up. And again, I appreciate the people who appreciate me. I appreciate the members, those who support the, the movement, the work, and those who are really engaging in the hard steps of life improvement. Wherever you are in the world, I want you to say this with full conviction, knowing that this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.